It's daily life. In thy name shall they rejoice all the day, and in thy righteousness shall they be exalted. In the Lord have I righteousness and strength. Even to him shall men come, and all that are incensed against him shall be ashamed. In the Lord shall all the seed of Israel be justified, and shall glory. Be glad in the Lord, and rejoice, ye righteous, and shout for joy, all you that are upright in heart. The righteousness of God without the law is manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets, even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ unto all and upon all them that believe, to declare at this time his righteousness, that he might be just and the justifier of him which believeth in Jesus. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice, whom having not yet seen you love, in whom, though you see him not, yet believing, you rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. Do you know why? Literally. Because of that scripture that was written there in Philippians 4.4, 4, which was literally, oops, maybe not Philippians 4.4, 4, in Romans 3.21, 22, and 26, which says that he would be the justifier of all them that believe in him. You see, Justified is what Jesus does for you and to you by way of his Holy Spirit. He has caused salvation to be made on offering unto God by way of faith if you would believe in the work that Jesus Christ has done. If you do, then you are opened up to having a personal relationship with Jesus so that you could talk to him, so you could walk with him and he could lead you and guide you as he said he would. And then he said he would open the door so that his father, as well as his father sending the Holy Spirit, would come to you and spend with you the joy that there is in knowing Jesus Christ in a personal, dynamic way. It's not about a book. It's not about a religion. It's not about having something that you don't know or can't understand or comprehend by saying, Oh, yes, if I just work it up inside, oh, I'm going to feel the chills, and then I know I'm saved. That's not what it's about. You see, the gospel is simply this. Jesus died for the sins of the world because God so loved the world that he made a way to escape the condemnation that's coming upon the world because of corruption. Because if you look around at creation, if you don't know this, and maybe you don't understand this completely, but when the world was created, corruption came in. <clears throat> there was an outside influence. That outside influence was caused by Satan, the fallen angel. Now, in his rebellion against God, he caused his corruption to come into creation. Because of that corruption, that sin is what we call it, that corruption causes separation from God because God is perfect and his creation now is corrupted. It's imperfect. God can't have imperfect with the perfect. He just doesn't work that way. Sorry. So he has to make you perfect in order to accept you. Are you perfect? You may think so. But based upon his law and the prophets, which is what we just read in Romans, that you are not perfect because the law and the prophets proves you need to be justified by God. Because justified by your own works fails miserably. But because of the grace that God has based upon his love for you, based upon the fact that he is love, and based upon the very nature of God being that he would choose to save you from your sins, not from the sins that someone else might have committed, but from your sins, because you, from the moment you were born, are a corrupt baby, a corrupt being, a corrupt creation. Sorry, you were born that way. Yes, I was born that way, according to the song. And it's true, you were. You were born corrupt, miserable, dying in your sins. But God has made a way for you to know and to experience perfection, to come to a place of realization that there is a creator and there is a creation. How can you find that out? Simple. Ask him. Ask and you shall receive. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door shall be open. It's so simple. Ask Jesus. Hey, are you real? If you are, let me know. And then follow up. Keep asking. 
if it's salvation and you're talking about eternity, I would think you would take the time to get serious about it and not just pretend. You know, if it takes going to a church to find out, go to a church. If you got to go to an evangelistic crusade, go to some crusade. What's it going to do to you? Brainwash you? Oh my God. How terrible can that be? I'm going to, let's see, I've tried drugs. I've tried getting wasted. I've tried getting stoned. I've tried doing all these other things. But now, you know, God forbid that I would hang around a bunch of Christians because they might brainwash me and I might get possessed by something. Hello? Maybe you might find out there is a God. Or they're just a bunch of wackos. So go and find out. That's what I did. Heck, I just went to a concert. Of course, when I looked around at that concert, I saw all these people that they had something I didn't have. And I was kind of excited about it. You know, maybe you think that's a little weird, but personally, depends on which concert you go to. <laughs> but for me, when I saw these people just having joy, I wanted it. When I saw how much they loved each other, I wanted it. When they had peace, oh boy, did I want that. And you know, sure, they took me in the back when they were normally doing their little thing about coming forward and they laid their hands on me and prayed for me and, you know, I felt something miraculous and marvelous and stupendous and it was the very Spirit of God coming in me and I was lit up like a candle. Huh, boy. There were words coming out of my mouth. I didn't even know the scriptures. And suddenly I had the knowledge of the scriptures. Unbelievable. But the point being is that why not find out for yourself? And if you do know, why not tell someone else? For me, it's pretty simple. Hey, you don't want God? Go to... <laughs> if you don't want God, fine. Go to hell. <laughs> I don't care. I mean, it's your choice. You can either go to heaven or go to hell. You can either live eternally in discovering all kinds of new things that God has in store, or you could just, because you're corrupt and staying corrupt and you don't want to be made perfect, go to hell. You'll probably wind up in some place that is just completely absent from the presence of God. You'll have no light, no goodness, no love, no mercy, no kindness, no any feelings, no sensory perceptions whatsoever, but because you're a being that was created in order to have fellowship with God, if you deprive that spirit that you have in you of all sensory perception, spiritual perception that is, and your soul of that, then guess what? They'll scream out in agony because they need input. You are created to have fellowship with God. If you don't have fellowship with God, guess what? When you die, it'll be agony. That's why we call it the lake of fire. It's going to burn. It's going to, uh, no light, no bright, no person, no sharing in the misery. Sorry, it's not that way. It's utter, absolute darkness. And even a darkness that you can't even conceive of what a darkness is. Because it's absolute without any knowledge or participation of God in it. That will not just drive you crazy, it'll torment you. Because there has to be a place for imperfection. God's perfect. Thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. The Lord reigns. He is clothed with majesty. Thy throne is established of old. Thou art from everlasting to everlasting, from ages to ages. The Lord is great in power. If God be for us, who can be against us? Our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us, and he will deliver us. Whether life, or death, or height, or breadth, neither principalities, nor powers, nor things above, nor things below shall ever be able to separate me from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus. So why should I take up a gun to defend myself? Why should I have swords in order to whack down people? Why should I act as though I need to fear being supposedly a doormat, when in reality I am the door that opens up to eternal life, that if I just share Jesus, even though it may cost my dying breath, that that man who comes to assault me, to torture me, to kill me, can do nothing to my soul. Nothing. For I am eternal. This flesh passes away, and the lust thereof, as well as the world. But what I share with the man who comes against me, the violent man, the man who does not know God, the man who may be suffering from having violent means and PTSD, 
the man who doesn't realize that there is a better way, that God can intervene in eternity as well as now in this life, that should I share that, perhaps in living and in dying, I may cause salvation to come to that man or that woman or that child or that nation. Is God in control? In God whom we serve, is He able to deliver? And He will deliver us. My Father which gave them me is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hands. Greater is He that is in you than he that is in the world, and if the disciples were dying on the cross as an honor to be crucified with Jesus, then why are we trying to live as though we can't die for Him today? I don't know. Why not? To share the gospel, wouldn't it be the greatest thing in the world to die for the faith? Or would you rather live denying it? Would you rather send someone else and be rejected by Jesus? Here am I, send me. The world wants to see what one man can do if God is real. Not unto us, O Lord, not unto us, but unto thy name give glory. Thine, O Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the victory and the majesty for all that is in heaven and all in the earth is thine and yours is the kingdom, O Lord, and you are exalted as head above all. Now, therefore, our God, we thank you and praise you. We praise your glorious name. But who am I? And what is your people? That we should be able to offer so willingly praises of this kind. For all things come of you, and from you have all things come. As they have left from you, they return to you. What are we to praise you? The children in love with a God, our God, who reigns 